Hi there, it's Adam Bushnell, the author. Thank you so much for joining me here on the, our YouTube channel. Um, today, we're going to do something quite exciting. I have had a few messages from people asking, where is Bell the dog? Because Bell the dog wasn't featuring on the Quests in Epica post the other day. Well, I have in my hand a treat, and we'll see if Bell wants to get involved. Bell, come here, good girl. Yeah. So we have the treat. We're maybe about to get the dog. I'll just put the treat down there. There she is. It's Belle the dog. Belle the dog is completely fine. And it is fortuitous that Belle is here today because we are having a story about an animal today, but not about Belle the dog. The story today is about a different animal. It's about a spider, which we'll talk about later. In the meantime, I've got some work to show, show and share with you. Now, the first image that I want to show is, this is Crash the Night. And this is by Rudy Howe, who's from Barleymore Primary School. Now, um, Rudy is only four and a half years old and she has designed Crash the Night, who looks like that. I think that's fantastic. Great job, well done to you. Next one. This is the Golden Hood, who looks a little bit like an Assassin's Creed character. And this is by Liam Taylor, who uh, is a regular viewer, hi to you, and special happy birthday message to you later on as well. And then finally, we've got Jacob from Pete Lee, who was sent this night, and he is kind. Oh, Belle the dog likes that one. What do you think, Belle? Cute. Do you like him? He is kind, he is strong, and he is a good friend to everybody. So well done to you. That's a fantastic job. Now, um, today, as I say, we're talking about animals. This is your cue, Bell. Okay, I'll try that again. We're talking about animals. She sort of made an appearance. Yes, there we go. Second take, always good. Now, the animal that we're talking about today features in one of my books that's up here. This is a Nancy the Spider, and that's the story I'm going to be telling you today is about a Nancy and the Sheep, which is a book that is coming out, I believe, in about a month or so. I have written quite a few Anansi stories before. There are, is an Anansi story in this book, Snakes, Legs and Cow's Eggs. There's an Anansi story in this book, Donkey's Wings and Worm Stings. There's an Anansi story in this book, Fish's Claws and Dinosaur's Paws. And then Anansi has his own book that's there. But Anansi isn't a new character. He's not somebody that I have just made up. Anansi is a, a really quite old uh, mythical character, um, a trickster god, if you like, but we'll talk about that later. I don't know how you feel about spiders. What do you think, Belle? Do you like spiders? I think she's after one of these. So, Belle, come on then. If you're going to be involved, let's get stuck in. Now, Belle the dog, I don't think is that bothered by spiders. I personally don't mind spiders that much. However, I am very lucky doing the job that I do, and I have been to lots of different countries around the world. It was visiting one of my favorite places, a place called Malawi, where I encountered the biggest spider I have ever seen in my life. Now, I was staying in a small little flat that was next door to a head teacher's house on the school grounds of one of the schools that I was visiting. And while I was there, I was particularly excited on this one particular day because the head teacher asked if I would like to go and visit an elephant sanctuary with him because I had a day off from visiting schools. So I very excitedly got up early that morning. And after I got up, I got myself showered and got myself dressed. And when I pulled the mosquito net around my bed, a spider came running out from underneath my bed. It was about the size of my hand, and it was a, a spider called a baboon spider, which is a type of tarantula. I do actually have a photograph here to show you. It's not a very good photograph because I took it from quite far away. I'll show Belle at first. What do you think of that, Belle? Uh, she swiped away from it, so I don't think she quite liked it. I'll just get it back. Anyway, for everybody who's watching at home, this is a picture of that spider. I need to drop my iPad. Sorry about that, Bell the dog. This is the spider that I encountered. It's It was huge. And I reacted in the only way that a man from England would react in that situation. I took a photo to put it on Twitter later on. Do you want to come back up? Come on. Now, after that, I went off to go and visit the 
elephant sanctuary with the head teacher after I'd taken my photograph. You see, I then put the camera back into my pocket and when I looked back at where the spider was, it had disappeared, it had gone. The head teacher then knocked at my door and said, shall we go to the elephant sanctuary? And off we went. And I got to see baby elephants, which was fantastic. It was one of the greatest things I've ever done. But I didn't enjoy it as much as I should have done because I kept thinking about that spider that was waiting for me in the room. So when we got back, I asked the head teacher, would you mind sending your children into my into my apartment, into my little flat, and they could try and find the spider for me? Well, he obliged and he let those children go inside. However, these children were armed with something called doom. And I thought they were going to catch the spider and relocate it, but instead they squirted the spider, bashed it with a stick, and eventually flushed it down the toilet. That's what the spider ended up looking like. And it made me realize that when I go on these trips, I need to be a little bit braver. I need to be a bit braver than hiding from spiders. Have you got a spider story that you could share with your family? What's the biggest spider that you've ever seen? Maybe you can have a chat with each other after we've had our story for today. But a Nancy the spider is not a scary spider like that one was. Look at his friendly face if you can see up there. And Nancy stories, they're taken from this country. This is the flag of a North African country. Anybody know what it is? Live chat isn't working today for some reason. So see if you can have a chat with each other. What is this flag here? It is the flag of Ghana. And if you got that right, well done to you. The Ghanaian flag is uh, one of my favourite flags. I just love it. And uh, Anansi the spider, the stories about Anansi came from the Ashanti culture, which are a Ghanaian in their origin. I like to collect Anansi books. These are one of my favourite ones. This one's by Philip Sherlock. It's Anansi the Spider-Man. This one here, another one by Philip Sherlock, is the Illustrated Anansi. Those are two particularly good ones. But I also love Neil Gaiman's interpretation of Anansi in American Gods and as well as in this book, Anansi Boys. Anansi is essentially a trickster character, a trickster god. Sometimes a spider, sometimes a man which kind of made him a little bit like the very first Spider-Man. Can you show me your Spider-Man hands? Can you shoot out your web lines? Just like this. He was sometimes a spider, sometimes a man. He was a spider quite large, like the one that I met, but he wasn't as large as the animals that he encountered. Animals like lions and tigers and bears, oh my. He always used his brain to defeat them, to Get one over on these characters, if you like. What he liked to do was to use his brain, a bit like Odysseus, who we talked about earlier on in these broadcasts. Now, the story that I'm going to tell you today, I wonder if Belle wants to get involved in the story here. Let's give her a shout. Can you all shout, Belle? Belle! Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Here she is. So let's settle down and listen to the story of Nancy and the Sheep. We know a little bit about this character, and so we know that he's a trickster, and we know that he's clever, and he probably likes treats too, just like Belle the dog does. Now, Anansi was walking down the street in Ghana in Africa. It was a blazing hot morning, and while he was there walking along, he walked past a farm. Now, on this farm, there was a sheep, a sheep with white fluffy fur, a sheep that might have looked a little bit like Belle the dog herself. But this sheep was not happy like Belle is a happy dog. Instead, this sheep was extremely miserable. Extremely miserable because the farmer that was meant to be looking after the sheep didn't give the sheep any food, didn't give it anything to drink, didn't give it anything. And the, the, the sheep was so sad and miserable. And then Nancy asked, what's wrong? And the sheep said, the farmer, he leaves me outside all day on scorching hot days like this. I'm so sad. I'm so miserable. If only somebody would help me to escape this farm and the horrible farmer. Well, Anansi's brain got to work straight away. He decided to use his spider powers. He got out his Spider-Man hands, he shot out his web lines, and he created a bridge that went from one side of the fence to the other. The sheep was delighted. The sheep went running over the bridge, and Anansi and the spider, they became the best of friends. Anansi and the sheep became the best of friends straight away. 
But just then, the farmer came out of his house. And when he saw the sheep escaping from his farm, he was furious. He shook his fist, he screamed, he shouted. He went running over to Anansi. And Anansi looked at the sheep and said, quickly, we need to run. So Anansi, the sheep, they went running and running and running and running and running fast as they could. But they were running so quickly that they didn't look where they were going. And they ran straight into the feet of a lion. The lion roared, the lion growled, the lion licked its lips. And the lion said, a spider and a sheep, that is exactly what I would like to eat for my breakfast. And it got itself ready to pounce. But Nancy said, no, wait, don't jump on us, don't eat us, because, um, because, uh, oh, because the sky is falling. And that's why we're running away. And so we need to run away as quickly as we can and you need to escape too. Well, the lion looked up and just then a mango fell from a tree and the lion shrieked in terror and ran away. And Nancy smiled, a clever smile. And he and the sheep carried on running and running and running and they ran until they ran straight into a leopard. And when the leopard saw the sheep and the spider, the leopard licked his lips and said, aha. A spider and a sheep. That's exactly what I'd like to eat for my lunch. And Anansi said, no, wait, don't jump on us. Don't eat us because the sky is falling. And if you stay here, you'll be, you'll be squashed, you'll be crushed just like us. At that moment, a banana fell from a tropical tree nearby. The leopard saw that and shrieked in terror and ran away as quickly as it could. And Nancy laughed and the sheep joined in too. Then they ran and ran and ran and ran and ran as quickly as they could. And they ran straight into a panther. The panther growled. Aha, it said, a spider and a sheep. That's exactly what I'd like to eat for my dinner. And he licked his lips hungrily. He'd started walking forward, getting closer and closer with those claws and those teeth. But Nancy said, no, wait, don't eat us. Don't jump on us. The sky is falling. And if you stay here, well, you'll end up being crushed just like us. And just then, a dragon fruit fell from a tree nearby. The panther looked, the panther shrieked in terror and ran away as well. And Nancy and the sheep, they roared with laughter. And just then, beyond where the dragon tree fruit had fallen, they noticed a field of luscious green grass. The sheep said, oh, I'm really hungry. Can we go there, please? I'm so starving. And Nancy said, of course, off we go. So they went into the field and the sheep began to eat. It went munching, it went crunching until its belly was bursting. It ate and ate and ate. And when they'd finished, or rather when the sheep had finished, they both noticed that there was a crystal clear lake nearby. The sheep was thirsty and so went over and began to drink from the lake. It drank and drank and it drank some more and it drank until its belly was going to explode all over that field, it was so full and it was so happy. But then the sheep noticed that it was getting dark. The sheep looked at Anansi and said, do you think we can sleep in this field here tonight? Uh, where should we go? Anansi said, I've got an idea. See that tree over there? I could use my web lines, shoot them out and try and make a hammock for us to sleep in. I can help you climb up into the hammock if you like. Oh, thank you. You're the best friend I've ever had, said the sheep. So Nancy the spider got out his Spider-Man hands and he went and he made a hammock that was hanging up in the trees. And Nancy then used more web lines to shoot out a line to lift the sheep up. And they both began to settle into the hammock and they both began to feel ever so comfortable and ever so cosy when all of a sudden, as the sky was darkening, three other animals turned up, three animals from earlier on in the story. The lion, the leopard, the panther came walking along. And those three big cats sat underneath the tree where Nancy and the sheep were trying to get some rest. As soon as they sat down, Nancy looked at the sheep and said, The sheep nodded in agreement. The lion spoke first from down there at the bottom of the tree. The lion said, Did you know, I met a spider and a sheep today and they told me some ridiculous story about the sky falling. <laughs> I must admit it, I did believe them. The leopard said, Same thing happened to me. 
The panther said, same to me as well. The lion said, if I meet those two animals again, I'm going to bite their legs off and crunch their bones to dust. The leopard said, I'm going to catch them and tear them apart. The panther said, not before I get there first. I'm going to keep my eyes open all night and look out for those two. Well, Nancy and the sheep had heard every word and the sheep was so scared that he started to shake with fear. He was shaking and shaking and shaking and shaking. And Nancy said, shh, stop shaking. You, you, you need to just stay still. We need to be as quiet as long as we can. The sheep said, it's not just that. I need a wee. What do you mean you need a wee, said Nancy? Well, I've just been and drank so much water at that lake that I'm busting. Well, he can't go to the toilet now, said Nancy. They'll hear us and they'll eat us. It's no good. I really, really need to go. And the sheep was shaking so much that <coughs> he fell from that hammock and landed on the floor. He landed right in front of the lion, the leopard and the panther. And as soon as those three animals saw the sheep land, they shrieked in terror and said, ah, look, a cloud just fell out the sky. We need to get out of here. The sky really is falling. And they ran away as quickly as they could. And Nancy helped the sheep back up into the hammock once he'd used the toilet. And they both settled down to get a peaceful night's sleep. That sheep decided to live in that field where he could eat as much food as he wanted to. He got to drink from the lake and he got to drink as much as he wanted to and he got to go to the toilet whenever he wanted to. And Nancy went on to have lots more of other adventures, but I'll have to tell you about those another time. I hope you like that story. Let's see if uh, Belle is still looking particularly sheep-like or cloud-like, like those animals were tricked into thinking in that story. Belle! Belle! She's coming. Good girl, come on then. Good girl. Are you coming up? She's coming. Do you think she looks like a cloud? Do you think she looks like a particularly fluffy animal? I wonder what your favourite animal is. Maybe you could come up with your own and Nancy's story based upon, well, knowing that he's a trickster. What trick could he play on a mean animal to save a cute animal like Belle the dog? Or, I tell you what, I'll start an Nancy story for you and then maybe you could finish it. So, for example, Nancy the spider was walking along the street when all of a sudden he came across the Monkey King's daughter. And the Monkey King's daughter was very, very beautiful. And Nancy immediately fell in love. The Monkey King's daughter fell in love with a Nancy too. So the pair of them went off to go and see the Monkey King. And when they got there, and Nancy said, I would like to marry your daughter. But the Monkey King said, you may only marry my daughter if you do three impossible tasks. You could decide what Nancy has to do. Maybe he has to jump over something. Maybe he has to climb up something. Maybe he has to eat something or wrestle something. Maybe he has to run around something. Which three difficult tasks could a Nancy do? And if you have some ideas, if you would like to write a story, if you want to draw a picture from this story or a story that you imagine with a Nancy in it, then you can send that to me and I'll show it here on this YouTube channel. We didn't have too many pictures today, but it is the Easter holidays, so I'm guessing not many people are doing what they might consider to be work. But I do love it when you send me your things, so please make sure that you do. Next story will be on Tuesday next week, the next live story. But don't forget, you can still catch up with me with Quests in Epica. Chapter 5 will be uploaded tomorrow and chapter six will be uploaded on Monday. Then we've got a live storytelling on Tuesday. Wednesday, chapter seven of Quests and Epica. Thursday, live storytelling. Friday, chapter, you get the idea anyway. Shout outs, that's what most of you are here for. So, shout outs today. Well, I did mention earlier on that it is a certain person's birthday today. Liam Taylor, happy birthday to you, you living legend. How are you doing, my friend? Next one, a big shout out to all my friends at Akerig Infant School. Hello to you and thank you for tuning in. Next one is to Poppy and Cole. Stay awesome, you two. Next, to all of the staff and the children at Crook Primary School. I hope you're joining me today and I hope you'll be joining me on Thursday as well. To Sebastian Lewis. 
hello to you who has not missed a single episode on this YouTube channel. Fantastic job, my friend. To everybody at St. Beads in Sacriston, hi to you. Thanks for all your tweets and your retweets. Also to all the staff and pupils at Stanford um, Primary School. Fantastic to hear from you on Twitter. From everybody at Heseldon School, thank you for continuing to tweet and to retweet. A big shout out to Finkel Primary School as well. Hi to you. Thanks to you for joining in. And a huge shout out to Emmerville Primary School. There are nine people in that school today and I give high fives to everyone. Actually, no, I don't. We're not allowed. I give elbow bumps to every single one of you. We've been getting a few international viewers as well. Hello to my friends in Malawi. That was why I chose an Anansi story for you today, because we were talking about Anansi when I visited you. And I was telling you about the spider that I encountered when I was there. Hello to all my friends from Vietnam. Stay awesome, you guys. Keep on tuning in. Hello to all my friends in China that I've visited previously. Hi to all of you. And finally, hello to all of my friends tuning in at UAE, at United Arab Emirates. Hello to all of you in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me again for this story. Remember, keep in touch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or just get in touch by sending me an email. Please send me your writing. Please send me your pictures. It's the only thing that is keeping me sane, and it's only just working. I do want to see your Anansi pictures. I'd love to read any Anansi stories that you've got as well. That would be fantastic. Um, also, tell me about the unusual places that you like to read in or that you like to read to, such as reading to your pets or reading to your toys, etc., etc. Remember to tune in to Liz Millions' channel so that you can learn some illustration techniques as well. Just hop over to there. Don't forget to subscribe and like to this channel and to that channel too. And don't forget to join me for Quests in Epica. The next chapters are coming up starting tomorrow. So, people, thank you so much for joining me today. Remember, stay positive, stay safe, stay indoors. And don't forget to give our NHS colleagues a great big round of applause tonight at eight o'clock. Anyway, thank you for joining in once again. Keep re-watching the videos as well. Keep re-watching the stories and tell your friends and your families. Let's get as many people involved with this channel as we possibly can. We are our storytelling, writing and illustrating community. So thanks very much, everybody. Belle the dog has fallen asleep, but she does say bye-bye. So bye for now. Bye.